We've had information from the government and then through supercars that we need to cross the border into New South Wales before midnight tonight. There's a lot of pent up energy. It's 106 days that engines that were being warmed up were forced to shut down. My car is a dog here. It's so bad. Based on all the computer work that we've done, we felt that we took a reasonable step. Chaz is feeling it wasn't a reasonable step. Lost it wide and a long way back. The hardest thing for a driver when you're lost, you tell your engineer, I want some more front, I want some more rear, I need better brake stability. Basically, you want everything, you want the menu. I can't manipulate, I, I can't even micromanage my inputs, you know. Yeah, it's the biggest change that we can do to the rear of a car yeah. to do what you want it to do. We've sort of had some ups and downs over those first first couple of races. I was nowhere near as well prepared as I wanted to be. Once you're in that wilderness, it's damn hard to get out of it. It's just the atmosphere around here. Everyone's laid back. Everyone's just chilled and having fun. Could be 45 degrees, we're all sweating, but it's just then the people just come out and just love it. Darwin is one of the best events on the calendar. We have great crowds, the whole town gets right behind the event. Being in Darwin this weekend is, is uh, a lot more pleasant than uh, what it was in Sydney a few weekends ago. So we've obviously got the good weather, but at the same time, there's, there's a bit of a crowd back, uh, which generally gives us a much better atmosphere. A little bit back to normal. love Darwin racetrack and, and the town and the event and, and the place we get to travel to because it's, it's beautiful up there. But what makes Darwin special for me is not just the people that you see out there, the supporters on the, the race weekends, but you get a lot of people that travel all around Australia to come to this event. And it obviously, it being Bryce's hometown um, and being the, the Hidden Valley Prince, we call him, um, I'm very excited to see how he goes. The Prince of Darwin, I believe, came from his trainer Josh Webb and uh, it pretty quickly came on as his moniker uh, because he is Darwin's own, the Territory's own, and he's super proud. We just want to repay the Territory people with something to cheer about, so we hope that the Prince gets up. To have the local hero line up in the main event was such a big deal for Bryce. He was so proud to have his family here, to be really engaged with all the fans, all the people that have supported him right from the very beginning. First public appearance since sort of, I guess, the world changed for us as supercars. How's this? I'll make myself right at home. Even the red carpet come out for the when we got off the plane, but then it got quickly round up for the other teams, so it's, uh, <laughs> it's been uh, quite an experience. So, yeah, thanks Prince of Darwin. No worries, mate. It's already just nudging 30 degrees at the racetrack today as we welcome you to Hidden Valley Raceway. Bet easy, Darwin Triple Crown for races two and three in the weekend at Darwin. The pit crew are an instrumental part of our of our racing. Not only obviously are they the mechanics of our cars, but obviously they're, they're there in all our pit stops and changing our tyres and there's a, yeah. you know, a massive part of our, yeah. our race is the performance of the pit crew. With no pit stops for refuelling required in the sprint races, the onus is on the teams to deliver the on-track strategic edge and with rapid tyre changes. At this point of the year, pit stop timing and stationary time is now everything. It's the difference between three or four positions on track when you get it right and wrong. Um, so timing is, is massive. Moving a 20 kilogram wheel and tire, plus a four kilogram rattle gun in 30 degree heat is no easy task. To throw another curveball in there for us, both cars, number one mechanics were unable to travel. Um, so, you know, had some people put their hands up, but then also, you know, you're trying to make up for something that doesn't feel natural to some of those guys as well. All right, let's go. Car two, car two, two. Car two, you've got 25, car two. It's very, very, very tough, but you know, to see the effort the team is putting in is, is second to none. Not only the, the pit crew guys, but everyone in the team is just wanting to um, 
to get better. To be honest, the best stop you can do four, I reckon is an eight. Yeah. So get eight. Yeah. Fuck you, your kicks and kicking goals. Nines are consistent. Tens, I think, you're giving away a little bit too much. Yeah. But first time on the gun, be right. is pretty good. So. This track is brutal, and I know you've got to start on the right foot. So all I ask is that we work as a team and uh, all the boys communicate. If you can see a problem, talk about it. We're all leaders here. We've got so much fucking experience in this place and a lot of people who've come from different teams and bring new stuff to us. Let's just keep talking about it. Macca, anything to add? Oh yeah, well, if there's any issues, please come see us straight away so we can get on top of it because we don't have much time. It's pretty clear it's in front of us. Let's go. Yeah. Good, good luck. Hey, Macca, we need a bench. We just move it all yeah, back in the middle and go. Oh, Race day in Darwin marks 39 days away from loved ones for many of the WAU crew. With key members missing and new responsibilities dropped onto others, cracks are beginning to show. Good morning everybody once again and looking forward to the first of our couple of practice sessions and what a relief it is to see supercars going back on track. Come on boys, press on. You need to be here ready. Focus, right? Don't worry about going back inside once you get him out there. Make sure you're ready to send him. Because he's got a sick light down on this car for whatever reason. At the, at the highest level, you know, in, in motorsport, there's so many factors um, to define a race winning performance. Okay, Jazz, come out slowly, mate. Just come out slowly. When you're ready. Hey, where will we stop? Stop. What are we doing, boys? Okay, let's go. Boys! No, I just don't know. If the car's. I just don't know what happened. If the car's on the ground, the wheels have got to be tight if you're doing yeah. up with wheels. Yeah. Okay, so stop yelling and screaming. Yeah. Calm down. I'm just trying to ask. That was all. No. I don't you, know. You, you, at the time, you know, a mistake can happen that everybody, not only in myself, we, we, we get frustrated. That's because we care and we're passionate about what we do. We just need to slow down. Yeah. We all just, it doesn't matter if we're 30 seconds late, if all the tyres are tight. Yes, yes. When you get caught up in, uh, oh, he did that wrong, oh, you did that wrong, you waste energy, time and resource to prove the point or are both wrong move forward. Tom Walkinshaw expanded his Australian racing operation in 2001 to a four-car team as a satellite operation alongside Holden Racing Team. Under the guise of Kmart Racing, the sister operation won the great race back to back in 2003 and 4 with Greg Murphy and Rick Kelly. 2003 is best remembered for Greg Murphy's famous shootout lap, labelled as Lap of the Gods. Uncharted territory for anybody on the mountain. Nobody's ever gone under the sevens. <laughs> Look at them. They've come out of the bunkers to applaud extraordinary work. Look at that. You will never see that at any other time in Australian motorsport. We're on the verge of an avalanche of supercar racing and that's going to roll out for the next four weekends. There's a lot of racing to come and a lot of points to score. Nobody goes out there for a rest. Practice means nothing in the final results, but it sure helps the confidence. McLaughlin has got a low seven against his name and probably at this point no one out there is going to better that. <laughs> Although having said that, Mostert, on the run of the flag at the moment, it's done a great middle set. In fact, the dead set one second after I finished that sentence, he punches a six. 
So the fastest man at the end of practice number one, the bet easy Darwin triple crown. Chas Moss at a one minute 6.74, two tenths of a second quicker than McLaughlin. Great lap, great mid sector. Good job, buddy. On a track that has traditionally not been suited to the team, P1 is a brilliant result. The key now, carry the form into the rest of the weekend. We kind of, I wouldn't say we're back, but we're kind of like, we're now heading on a, on a strong path. And if we use, if we use the reference that, that we've discussed before about our relative pace to our teammates, they took their traditional approach and they were struggling, whereas we were at the, at the front. We, we did the learning and, and now they could start to benefit from that learning. Adam, he's a very, very clever race engineer. Understands car dynamics very well, understands the tyre very well, how that interacts with the, with the suspension setup. He's a very rounded engineer, if you like. So it's a 10 minute session, it's a short, sharp blast, and they've got to try and find themselves in the top 20 cars in order to progress. We went into Darwin, Darwin 1, with this clear, defined plan of attack. We've gone, right, had these problems with the rear of the car. We're going to go Darwin and we're, going to, we're just going to isolate them. Take the problems out of the equation. How can we, how can we, it's going to hurt the car in other areas, but should help identify the weakness of the car. We went through and executed our program. Just go out, practice, quick. Doing our finish our final run in quality two, as we come on the straight, I think we're, we're going to be you know, right up the front. Tail shaft snaps. And you're like, oh. Okay, buddy, copy that, copy that. Good job pulling over. Well, uh, I'm really sorry, mate. This is big news. What's the story here? Yeah. Can you drive it at all or have you got no drive whatsoever? Come on to the straight, picked up a, a really big vibration like it was a, like an engine noise. Brian said you could, you could hear it disintegrate on TV when you downshift. So Mostert, who's been first and second, let's listen. That's not nice. That's not nice. And they've triggered the red flag to retrieve that car. It's in an awkward position on the outside. I think it was on the outside of turn six. Copy that, buddy. Copy that. Well, hopefully they can tow us back um, so we can get started on as soon as possible. Uh, you were third quickest in that run, so no, no consolidation. But... We just can't get a friggin' trick at the moment. We've got a little bit of a chat from Chaz saying there was a box of neutrals. Any more information from that? Um, yeah, it's obviously a drivetrain related issue. So, very disappointing, obviously. You know, we just have to start from the back and see how we go. It's going to be a long old day. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. We, we, we were obviously disappointed with how our qualifying turned out because we felt we could have challenged for pole. Yeah, bit of a bit of a kick in the teeth. Didn't get to start where we, we thought we believed we should start. And um, if, yeah, I think it's just, um, that's motor racing. Disaster for Mostert, with only two hours until race start. The pressure is on inside the sweltering garage to get the car repaired. The failure means Mostert will start from 20th in the afternoon race. Yeah, you know that you're out for the whole, for the rest of it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a bit confusing because you might think, okay, well, I'm out of Q1. Still good enough to go through. I know, yeah, because four lap three is the whole thing, yeah. But I should still be, I still, I won't. You'll be you should be 20th. Yeah, I'm agreeing. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Just saying, I'm agreeing for a more dramatic finish. Guys did a fantastic job to, to get all that change for the racing, um, but at least there was positivities there that we, we had a fast car. Both the WAU cars find themselves at the back of this ultra-competitive field. Time to earn their money and pass some cars. Beautiful. Thank you.
This is the 2020 Bet Easy Darwin Triple Crown. The Northern Territory, the perfect mid-winter queue-up. And so are supercars in Darwin. A ripping start by Wind Cup. Great work, buddy. done a good job, Propo has mossed it, so he's up to 10th. 20th to 7th for car 25. A great drive from Chaz, and plenty learned for the resumption of competition the next day. The chequered flag will fly. Anton Di Pasquale, Penrite Racing, Anton picks up his very first victory in supercar racing. We had to deal with the heat, the strategy, the approach, and um, it wasn't the best result. But we, we learnt a lot, and we could carry that into Sunday. Going to race at Darwin was super exciting because I'm the first full-time Territorian supercars driver to race at home in Darwin in front of the home crowd. Um, was really, really cool. Great leg, great leg. We're set now for our second instalment of racing from Darwin. Sunday in Darwin, the first of two back-to-back -back weekends and a chance for WAU to bounce back after the issues that plagued them the previous day. Moster's putting a huge amount of pressure on Anton there at the moment too. For Moster, eighth. Then fourth, a respectable outcome. Mostert, Waters and Heimgarten are through to 10th. We're set to go racing for the third and final time this weekend. However, for the rookie forward, his run on home soil was not going to plan. Rice free joins. Been a baptism of fire for him this weekend. He hadn't driven a supercar here prior to this weekend. It was pretty difficult, you know, having come off the back of two pretty good race meetings at, at Sydney and you know coming into Darwin there was so much hype you know it was, it was it was cool but you know we the performance just wasn't there you know we come in session after session and we're 21st 22nd 23rd it was it was tough it was a big uh, it was a big blow you know it wasn't like we'd lost a little bit of performance and we'd just lost everything certainly the pressure got to him in week one Certainly there were a lot of people at his home and you know, wanting Bryce to do well. There's quite a few appearances, huge amount of press, and no doubt for the young man it got a little bit much and the first round didn't go as, as well as planned. One of, I guess, the silver linings of uh, season 2020 was that we had um, double headers. So if it didn't work out in the first weekend, everybody had an opportunity to kind of rethink. Yeah, they were working harder, they were away from home, didn't know how long they are going to be away from home. So that would have been very, very hard. When you see good sporting teams and when they're going well, the overriding thing is that they look like they're having fun. We're very lucky to go to places like Darwin in the first place, but during this whole COVID period and the guys getting stuck on the road, away from their families, it was awesome to see the whole team get taken out to go enjoy an experience together and yeah it was it was a lot of fun out there from a bonding point of view for for me with being in a fresh team and stuff like that it was so good to just get away from a racetrack to get to know different people and different relationships and and all that kind of stuff for a fun experience that was that was awesome Felt like they were kings for a day and got to enjoy something um, that they might not normally do, just for everyone to feel a little bit human and put that motor racing life aside for a second was uh, worth its one gold. Oh, he's way over there. Went out there and saw a heap of crocodiles and, you know, for me that's not, like I'm from Darwin, I've seen them all the time, but 
you know, to, for all the guys, they're like, man, these guys are nuts. Come on. Oh, 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 many different dangerous things I guess you can do and driving 300 kilometers an hour is definitely one of them but for me seeing an extra crocodile was uh you know that was right up there like you know I was, spent a lot of time around crocodiles I've grown up with them but you don't they're not your pets they're not something you find in your backyard and they're something that you avoid and nine times out of ten they avoid you too but you go if there's one sitting on the bank you don't go stand next to the goddamn thing and, but anyway you know we all felt pretty safe with the with the instructors there <laughs> We've learnt a lot more about each other um, and uh, at the end of the day it actually it just makes going racing even more fun. It's a magical location. The Northern Territory is host to the Supercars for the second successive weekend. We all thought that the second weekend it would be the same sort of layout of teams and drivers as the first weekend, but Bryce did a fantastic job to obviously have that time in between to think about what he was lacking, what the car didn't do, what he needed to do, and work a bit of a game plan. So for him, and being the local boy, everyone was you know, had a bit of expectations on him to perform. Um, he knows the track really well, but of course, you know, you need to put the ingredients together to get the car where you want it in the window. For him, again, it would have been really confidence but I'm thinking of more the fact of just the belief that he can now do it. And we've got a 10 minute session mark scape. We'll eliminate some cars and what we're building towards is a top 15 shootout. Back to back weekends in the top end. It's home turf for Bryce Ford and a chance for the local boy to show everyone why the team chose their first rookie in over 20 years. Here's Bryce Ford. Terry and I went, okay, we're going to attack. I'm going to push the limit straight away, and you know, if I fly off the road breaking too late, so be it. Bryce Forward goes to the top with a 628. Well done. That's a great lap. Big incentive in that number, isn't it, when you look down and spot that on the dash at the end of the lap? Nice work, mate. What the hell happened there? I don't know. Just started to go fast. Oh, Prince of Darwin's back, buddy. We had a, a very tough weekend last weekend, you know, we chopped and changed the car a lot, which made it really hard to get my head around what I was actually, what actually had under me sort of thing. So this weekend we've started off with basically what Chazzy had last weekend and starting to get my head around it a bit now. Mark Scaife was joined by a youthful Todd Kelly for the 2005 Bathurst 1000 race. And the pair had their fair share of tough competition. However, the race is often remembered for the brutal exchange at the cutting between fierce rivals Marcus Ambrose and Greg Murphy. Guys, the track is jammed. The track is jammed. These two do not like each other. And they are going to. The victory for Scaife and Kelly on Todd's birthday sealed five wins in a row for War Control prepared cars and seven in a row for the Holden Mark, a record that stands to this day. Down two, you're always more optimistic than, um, than what you were the week before. You know, you know exactly what the, the strengths and weaknesses of the car was. Uh, I think the results from Darwin one were, were we're very plausible. There's definitely room to improve, and you know when you you're inside the top ten and 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 you're knocking on the door of podiums, then um, you just need to find a small improvement to make that happen. With both cars making the shootout, it's Chaz Mostert's turn to tackle the track first, with his teammate running later in the session. 
Chaz Mostert gets stuck into it. Cut number 25 for Mobile One and Appliances Online. The run down to one for him. Seventh, eighth and fourth last weekend. Tremendous finish record and it just cranked sideways at the wrong moment in the middle of the corner at one. In our game, in supercars, if something's a mil millimetre out, then it, it can change the way a car works massively and, and some things just didn't line up set up wise. Chaz, that little mistake at turn one, that will have hurt him. Hey Chaz, Mark Scaife, a little bit of a moment in the middle of turn one, mate. Yeah, um, our car's a little bit nasty today. Um, we're not quite getting the stability we had last weekend, so grip levels have come up and we've undershot the mark a little bit. Only a goon doesn't learn from someone in the next garage. There were times when Terry and Bryce had done a really good job and the car was good. And I think under those scenarios, then you have to get Chaz and Adam to have a look for why. As second quickest qualifier for the shootout, forwards will be the second last car to run. This provides the rookie with a valuable chance to observe those ahead of him to calculate the best plan of attack. Chaz, you had that oversteer one. So I think the secret is, is just not be too hot in the one, and then the rest of the lap will take care I think of itself. You can get it in hot. Just try and flatten the car off for that phase. All right, we're about to get on with the shootout now. You know, for me, I've been getting a lot of my time under brakes. Like, obviously, the previous race meeting, I lost a lot of my time under brakes, and so I come in with a completely different aim, and I was like, I'm going to brake as late as I possibly can, and if I fly off the road, I'll fly off the road. Next up, great story, this one, car number two for Mobile One and Middies. He's a local. He's been spending time with the family during the week. He'd be very nervous. He's only 22 years of age. You see the locals on the top of the hill there clapping him. Oh, that's a slightly ropey start to the lap. He just got the dirt. Stop it, Strader. So I come down into turn one on my shootout lap and I was I'm going to break as late as I can and I broke too late and I uh, so nearly went off the road. I didn't, but I so nearly went off the road and I cost myself about a tenth. There's the danger zone there on the right hand side which he navigates neatly and gets it squared up beautifully to the final corner. And he moves it up into ninth spot. Still not a bad lap on a 6.5, 3 tenths slower than he did on the run. Hey Bryce, Mark Scaife, well done. Hey, thanks Mark. Yeah, I, uh, a little bit bummed. I lost a tenth on the front straight there in the dirt a little bit, but um, made even still massive improvement for me, so really happy. Yeah. I mean, look at that, a tenth. Yeah, it's fucking close. I felt a little bit disappointed, but uh, at the end of the day, we were in the shootout. Um, that's, that's one of the biggest goals, is just to be in it, and uh, anything else is a bonus. You know, Bryce is, he's got a pretty high racing IQ, so he's not just there to get smashed by Mostert. He, he knows why he's really there, and he, and he wants to do well. Chaz, he had all this one lap speed, had all this pace, felt, no, 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 no we, we should be at the front now. We're fast. We have got a green flag. You know, I've just had a couple great practice sessions, a couple great quality sessions, all right? If, in his head, we were, we were front row. We're back for seconds. It's more supercar action in Darwin, and what a great start. As an athlete and as a driver, you've got to be careful that you don't strive too hard and you start trying too hard and doing things that aren't natural and because ultimately it's your natural style that's got you to this point in your career. Through two, well, this is 200 kilometres an hour. There's some vigorous battles going on in this field. Look at this one, side by side. So for him to then race mid-pack and, and not really you know, have the great result, he was, he was very fresh, he was gutted. 
So there was contact then between Boston and Coulthard. There was a little wriggle. There's a crowd at the top of the hill enjoying this, and so is Scott McLaughlin. He rolls it down to the chequered flag, and he takes victory number 49 in his career. Good job. It was a uh, very difficult day today. Sorry for everything. Courtney Perkow, Di Pasquale, Holdsworth, Van Gisberg and Most at Coulthard, that was your 10. Three positions gained in the race, but Mostert is far from impressed. Sorry, buddy. I'd love the sugar coat for you, but I reckon that's probably one of the worst cars I've driven. No matter what you do, you could not. So, obviously, we did rears at the stop. Was that I didn't because... Want rears because if I didn't take the left side rear, I was going to be so shit. Yeah, okay, so was it, was the car, was the overall balance of the car oversteery or was it? It just doesn't have any braking stability on the droop. Okay. And then it's just got no lateral drive. No. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. The steering wheel's heavy now with the power steering, which is shit. It's just not fucking easy. Right. Like so bad lateral drive compared to other cars, so bad. I, I feel like something in our car has to be broken or something's fucked in the setup because I just don't understand how it could be night and day different than last week. Trust me, it's not that fault has entered my head because of him. Yeah. Because, you know, we had obviously had everything apart, so. Um, yeah, absolutely shit out. You may as well have fucking go jacks under the rear. Frustration was sneaking in at this point, and you know we we go on the truck and and you have to let him vent every now and then. And I said to him, I said, mate, I said, what? You know, I know you're pissed, right? But realistically, you got nothing to be pissed about. He said, what do you mean? Well, I said, well, mate, we just we threw a, a dart at a dartboard and we made a car quick for a lap. It's never going to work in a race. So that's what we need to fix now, is we're pushing for 20, not pushing for one. So it's going to take time. And, and he calmed down and obviously, you know, we debriefed about it. And, and, and again, like I said, when he, when he actually sits back and looks at what we're trying to achieve and how much we're changing, it was fine. It wasn't a, it wasn't a drama. Frustration at that point was to not to, to go into the truck and and show Frank words or anything like that. It's to go to the truck, get away from the noise, and let's try and solve the problems. I think there's still fundamental big issue on the, the entry, so the changes didn't make that any stability any better. There's nothing dramatically different in the setup of the car from last weekend to this weekend to explain such a dramatic change in the feel and the balance of the car. Okay, well, uh, yeah, thanks for your time, gents. Uh, and then I guess us guys all Talking through this evening as stuff comes up. Again, it comes down to those years of relationship of, of you know working together. There's times where you need to have those serious chats and those serious you know talking sessions where, where the results aren't good, but it's also very important to 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 think that we're all family. Challenging period for Chess. For many in the team, the second Sunday in Darwin marked 46 days on the road. Anxiety was mounting over the pressure of four back-to-back -back weekends, with Townsville next, and 2,700 kilometres of travel to manage. All we're going to do is focus on today. The key thing I know in this business after being in it for a long time is that you can fall into a, a, almost a route of just going round by round by round, accepting, see, accepting mediocrity. But what, what I do know is you're just going to go nail today. Don't worry about the fucking pack up tonight. Don't worry about what happens where we're going to Townsville and all of that. Just fucking focus on today. We need to get a fucking result today. I don't think we need to be the best out there. We're definitely not quite there in speed, but we just need to keep our consistency up. Obviously, if we can get back to the car, like it was last weekend, we're around fifth, and if we can keep working on those small things and just build consistency and belief in ourselves, we don't need to just smash it. So just everyone have a nice, clean day and 
I'm good. We'll get there, hopefully a good result at the end of the day. Alright, let's go and do it. Cheers, thanks mate. We're all working to a common goal and we need to, need to learn. We're constantly evolving, constantly changing, and we are learning. So, you know, we've clearly identified an issue with the car and we have to adapt. Okay, Chazzy, you are on the right-hand side of the track next to Holdsy's bucket of poo and uh, it's a stop up on uh, Bray Dog. Chas Mostert was not complimentary of the behaviour of the car yesterday. He's <laughs> hoping, fingers crossed, it's better today. I guess for Chaz there's a level of frustration that's starting to creep in because, you know, you've got this great one lap speed and it certainly feel, looks and feels like the team have found something with that one lap speed, but it's not translating to race pace. Have fun. It's Darwin 2.0, core staff, Darwin super sprint, they drop the clutch. For me that's a degree of frustration and we're seeing that with Chaz this weekend, he's outwardly frustrated and you ultimately start getting caught up in these little firefights if you like, these little micro battles that you probably wouldn't normally get yourself caught up in. percat has got a bit of a lock up going here because he's got pressure from Chaz Mostert at the moment. Got some history, these two young blokes. Percat's in this lap as well. Percat's in this lap as well. You know, Nick is a he's, he's a hard racer. He just he just doesn't give up. And and most people, you know, most of the guys that would be racing, defend and fight, but realise we're fighting a losing battle. Mostert gets up, makes a spot on Nick Percat, but Nick's not done yet. Down the inside at five on the dirty side of the road. Oh. Oh my goodness. In battling as hard as he was, he was actually hurting himself relative to cars behind, not just us. Oh, and Nick's giving him a little rub coming onto the straight, so it's not done. This is one heck of a battle. So it's not for a podium, but it's for pride and points. Perker down the inside, crisscross oh, on the push and shove, and he's giving him one down at turn one. Fuck off. And Perkat's gone off the road. Mostert will be in strife for that. That was blatant. When I find myself racing with, with Nick, you know, no doubt we want to beat each other as much as anything. And um, we'll race as hard as hard as we can. And, and some of these situations come out come out wrong. And obviously at this point it did. 15 second time penalty of car 25 for a driving infringement. So Chaz Mostert is going to get sent down the order when the results are published and Nick Perkat's back on the road now in 15th position. So they're in sixth gear, they've got to get back to second. Big brake pressure's involved here, watch this. Got anything on Perkat from the bump and run before on the last corner? Nah. Wasn't enough, I did. No, it wasn't enough. Out of the final corner, a clean run to the flag, and race 17 falls to Scott McLaughlin. Beautiful drive. Fabian Coulthard, Cam Waters, Jamie Wincup, Chaz Mostert is going to be down the order when that all gets corrected. They've caught us to the scales. Yep. Chazzy Mostert, you're having a great battle there with Nick Perkett. Uh, just talk us through that uh, turn one incident. Yeah, it didn't end the way we wanted it to, but um, yeah, rubbing's racing, and um, there was plenty of rubbing before that. So um, look, it is what it is at the end of the day. I thought I gave plenty of room, but then um, yeah, he just stopped. So yeah, it's not ideal. We race hard. I think we crossed the line seventh or eighth, so we'll take that in the memory bank and just keep moving forward. Oh, good luck this afternoon. Thank you. Cheers. It's a situation where. Um, a misjudgment on, on my part cost us a, a better start, a better finishing position. So, yeah, a lot of people probably at the time would, in the team would be frustrated with that. Um, but we all make mistakes at points. So, depend have a good team around you is how you, how you get over that and move forward. And, and Chaz is usually such a happy-go-lucky, bubbly, you know, approachable guy. But you can see see this frustration in him and uh, that's very un like So um, it's an interesting dynamic in the team at the moment. I mean, 
we, we just got to keep focusing forward. So um, take the good results and you take the bad results and it's uh, full, full eyes forward. All right, good luck, man. Keep me posted. After a big journey to the Northern Territory and McLaughlin's done it again. He drops the clutch, finds the bite point, minimises the wheel spin and commands the lead. And on the outside, Mostert having a big lunge. Oh. What was that? Here's Mostert. Little... I don't even know whether he actually made contact. He did now. <laughs> There's Robbie Starr was animated about it. Scott McLaughlin has done it again. Mostert, Wincup, Heimgarten, Adip Pasquale, Coulthard, that is your top 10. I'm really happy we did changes for the races today. Yeah. I think there's some good data there too. To... Especially if you think that's the first thing that we've done that's touched it, so. I'm, I'm pleased. Like... All we can do is see if that strength translates to the next place. Unable to return to the team headquarters, the engineering group are forced to develop on the road. With no end date set, it's eyes forward to Townsville. Next time on Inside Line. There's not a lot of places that plays into Chaz's strengths, but here. Ultimately, we know that the first race win at WAU with Chaz is, is going to happen. It'll happen at some point. Curious to see how Chaz Mostert goes. Being conservative, being lucky as we are. And Mostert is going to have his first pole for Walker Troy Andretti United. Well done, boy. Hopefully, we can uh, get off the line and have a good crack. We're sick of being risk averse and mid pack. What we won't do is sit in the middle and be nothing. Good job, boy. Oh, and a last minute dive! You're well in Bruce's good You can leave this eight trailer a pig start. We got to and we deserve to pull more of that stuff out. Focus, focus, focus. A loose right rear. Loose right rear, boys. A bit late. It feels really bad. Really bad. He's in. He's in the lane. I don't know what's going on. So we're off to pick up a couple of our guys who've been in ISOs. We've done two weeks here in Townsville. Welcome to life. Yeah, <laughs> welcome out. Bryce Fullwood gets a podium as a rookie, and they are loving it at Walkinshaw Andretti United. I reckon you go away for a long time, and it can either break you or make you. So I know you'd rather probably be at home with the kids. Doing good on the weekend, but I still hope Scotty wins. Happy Father's Day. I want you to be home soon. As part of a team, brothers on the road, you got to look after each other. She's just hard work being famous. I had zero worries about the next two events until I just went into that meeting. Yes.